timers of MSP 430. So there are various timers available in MSP 430. The first is timer 1 which is called as a basic timer. The second is RTC, real time clock. Third is watchdog timer that is WDT. The fourth is timer A, then timer B. So today we'll discuss about timer A. Timer A is a synchronous 16 bit timer counter. The same timer block can be used as a counter also. There are four input clocks. So these include uh, input clocks include externally source clock also. The selectable count mode, that means user can select the modes of this count of timer. The interrupt capability is also available for this timer. There are three capture compare resistors, CCR, which generates events when the particular value is reached. Uh, capture and compare modes are also available. Output uh, not only interrupts, but output signal is also available where we get a output. Extensive connection to other modules is also possible in this timer. This is the complete block of capture compare model and the timer model. So the first is the timer clock. So four options are available like timer A clock or synchronous clock, this SMCLK and in CLK. So any of these four options can be selected by using user through these bits that is T-A-S-S-E-L-X bits. After selecting a proper clock, the clock can be divided uh, by 2, 4 or 8 or we can use the same clock for this timer block. So to select division of timer, this IDX bits are used. Two bits are available in timer control registers. So these bits are used to select the proper clock division. So after this divider block, the selected clock is given to timer block. So timer operates on this selected clock signal. This is a timer resistor, TAR resistor. Generally, this is initialized with 00H initially and after each clock cycle, count of this timer resistor will be incremented by 1. As per the delay, user will calculate a count and that count will be stored in capture compare resistor. There are three different models of capture compare available in this uh, microcontroller. The first model is written as CCR0, then second is CCR1, and third is CCR2. So here CCR2 model resistors are shown. So as per the delay, user will calculate the count, and that count will be loaded in TACCR2 resistor. After each clock cycle, the count of this TAR resistor will be incremented by 1. This comparator will continuously compare contents of TAR resistor with TACCR2 resistor. And when there will be a match between these two values, then the flag bit will set to 1. So two flags are available here, CCIFG flag and TAIFG flag. So this bit is set first and after one more clock cycle, this flag bit is set to 1. In programming, we can use any of these flag bits. There are different modes, count modes available for this timer and to select this count mode, this MCX bits are used. Four count modes are there. To select this one of this four count mode, MCX bit is used. So this is the working of timer. All these blocks are used for capture and compare model. So this block is used for the dimer and there is a compare resistor also which compares the contents of TAR resistor with capture compare resistor. 
द रजिस्टर एसोसिएटेड विथ टाइमर ए आर लिस्टेड हियर सो फर्स्ट रजिस्टर इज टाइमर ए कंट्रोल रजिस्टर दैट इज टी ए सी टी एल रजिस्टर देन टाइमर ए काउंटर रजिस्टर दैट इज टी ए आर रजिस्टर विच इज इनिशियली इनिशियलाइज विथ वैल्यू जीरो जीरो एच देन टाइमर ए कैप्चर कंपेयर कंट्रोल जीरो रजिस्टर टी ए सी सी टी एल जीरो रजिस्टर देन टाइमर ए कैप्चर कंपेयर जीरो सो दैट इज टी ए सी सी आर जीरो देन टाइमर ए कैप्चर कंपेयर कंट्रोल वन टी ए सी सी टी एल वन देन टाइमर ए कैप्चर कंपेयर वन टी ए सी सी आर वन टाइमर ए कैप्चर कंपेयर कंट्रोल टू टी ए सी सी टी एल टू टाइमर ए कैप्चर कंपेयर टू टी ए सी सी आर टू एंड टाइमर ए इंटरप्ट वेक्टर रजिस्टर दैट इज टी ए आई वी रजिस्टर आउट ऑफ दिस रजिस्टर विल डिस्कस हियर इम्पॉर्टेंट रजिस्टर सो द फर्स्ट रजिस्टर इज टाइमर ए कंट्रोल रजिस्टर दैट इज टी ए सी टी एल रजिस्टर सो इन दिस रजिस्टर दिस बिट्स आर अनयूज बिट्स the other bits are used this bit number 3 is also unused so this t a s s e l x bits the two bits are available timer a clock source select as i told you there are four clock sources and out of this we have to select one clock source so if this bits are 0 0 then t a c l k clock is selected If it is zero one, then auxiliary clock is selected. If it is one zero, then sub master clock is selected. And if it is one one, then internal clock is selected. So these bits are used to select clock signal. Then IDX bit. These two bits are used to select the divider, clock divider. If zero zero, then divide by one, means clock is connected as it is. Zero one means divided by two, one zero means divided by four, and one one means divided by eight. So these two bits are used to select the clock division. The next two bits are MCX bits. These bits are used to select the modes of this timer. So there are four different modes of timer. Zero zero means stop. You can stop a timer. 01 means up count mode in this mode timer repeatedly counts from 0 to value t a c c r 0 10 is continuous mode the timer repeatedly counts from 0 to f f f f h 11 is up down count the timer repeatedly counts from 0 up to the value of t a c c r 0 register and then it comes back back down to zero so these are the four modes of timer as per our application we can select any one mode then tacler timer a clear so setting this bit resets tar register then taie it is timer a interrupt enable this bit enables the taifg interrupt request so zero means interrupt is disabled and one means interrupt is enabled taifg is timer a interrupt flag bit if this is bit is zero interrupt is pending no interrupt is pending and if it is one interrupt is pending the next register is tar register which is count register and this register is used to hold 16 bit count generally this register is initialized with 00h and after each clock cycle this count will be incremented by 1 so it is a 16 bit register next register is capture compare control register tacc tlx register so only important bits of this register are shown here like cap bit ccie bit and ccifg bit the cap bit is used to select either capture mode or uh, compare mode 
So if this bit is 0, then we can select a compare mode. If this bit is 1, we can select a capture mode. Next bit is CCIE. It is capture, compare, interrupt, enable bit. So interrupt request, uh, that is interrupt is generated, then this bit is set to 1. So to enable this interrupt, this bit is used. So if this bit is 0, interrupt is disabled. If this bit is 1, interrupt is enabled. The next, this CCIFG is the flag bit. When there is an interrupt, then this bit is set to 1. That means when timer has completed its operation, automatically this bit is set to 1. Otherwise, this bit is 0. So when timer is busy, this bit is 0. Then the modes of this timer operation. So there are four modes and one mode is to stop the operation of timer. So this is the up mode. So diagram or waveform for up mode is shown here. So in this mode, the timer will increment its count of TAR resistor. So initially TAR resistor is initialized with value 00H. After each clock cycle, this count is incremented by 1. This count will be incremented by 1 till it reaches to the value stored in CCR resistor, TACCR0 resistor in this case. When the contents of TAR resistor and contents of TACCR0 resistor are equal, the output will shift from uh, logic 1 to logic 0. And again timer will start its operation. That means TAR resistor will again reset to 00H. And again it will be incremented by 1 after each clock cycle. And when it will reach to this value, the output will shift from logic 1 to logic 0. So this process will be repeated continuously and will get this type of signal at the output of timer A. That is during up counter. The next is up down counter. In up down counter, same thing, same operation uh, occurs. Uh, Initially, that means first TAR count will be 0. After each clock cycle, TAR count will be incremented by 1 till it reaches to this value. When TAR will reach to this value, the count of TAR will decrement it by 1 till it reaches to 0. And this cycle will repeat it continuously. So that's why it is called up-down counter. First, it will up go in upward direction and then it will go in downward direction. The next is continuous count. In continuous count, no need to store count in CCR resistor. The TR resistor is initialized with 00H and after each clock cycle, the TR count will be incremented by 1. When TAR count will reach to FFFFH value, it will directly go to value 0. So it will always compare TAR count with FFFFH. So no need to initialize CCR resistor. And this process will repeat continuously and will get this type of signal at the output of timer. So these are the three modes of timer. And the fourth mode is to stop the timer. In MSP430, submaster clock is considered as 1 megahertz generally and auxiliary clock is used as a 32 kilohertz. So to write a program here, the first thing is we have to include msp430.h file that is a header file. So it depends upon which microcontroller you are using. After that, we are writing here main program. So the first instruction in main program should be to stop watchdog timer. 
otherwise watchdog timer will reset the microcontroller at predefined time interval so it will disturb our program that is means it will disturb the counting of timer because after predefined time interval it is going to reset the microcontroller so that's why the simple program first step is to stop the watchdog timer the next will initialize this register so this ta0 cct l0 register this bit is uh, use of this register this is interrupt enable bit and this bit is set to 1 so enable the interrupt for timer a0 then in ta0 cctl we'll select the clock signal uh, we'll select the clock signal we'll select the mode of operation and we'll select the frequency division so here we have selected smclk clock up uh, count and divide by 8 so taccr0 is initialized with this count 10000 so that means the tar res uh, register will be incremented up to this value now we want to generate a output at this p1.0 output pin so this pin here we are using as a output pin then uh, p1 out to port 1 we are sending output 0 then after this uh, we'll use we'll enable the interrupt global interrupt and uh, uh, the cpu will be entered into a power down mode and we'll wait for the timer interrupt because it is enabled for timer interrupt program we have to use this hash pragma vector and this is the name given to interrupt subroutine so for this interrupt we are writing here this program p1 out as cap is equal to 0101 0x01 so it will complement the output of this particular pin so we'll get a square wave at this terminal Okay. this register is used to control the clock so this is initialized with 0x20 so 10 we have to store in VL0 clock VL0 clock is selected as 12 kilohertz so how to calculate this count uh, so count depends upon the frequency suppose frequency is 12 kilohertz we are dividing it by 2 so you'll get frequency of timer as 6 kilohertz so for one second we can calculate this count ta0 ccr0 will be equal to 1 divided by 6 kilohertz that is time for one clock cycle so if you compute value of ta0 ccr0 that comes to be 6000 so for one second the count which we have to store in ta0 ccr0 resistor is 6000 so 6000 should be stored in this resistor to generate a delay of one second so we can write a program for this this bcs ctl30 is initialized with 20 to use this smclk frequency watchdog timer is disabled here the interrupt bit is enabled and we have selected the frequency the division and everything so for one second delay we have initialized this ccr0 register with count 6000 then the direction of this p1 register uh, or p1 uh, terminal is selected at 0x01 p1 out is 0x01 and we'll enter it into uh, the power down mode so it will wait for the interrupt and if interrupt occurs it will go to this interrupt service routine at interrupt service routine we are complementing a data placed on this p1 out so we'll get here the square wave 